I actually loved it when you said just because something is for developer doesn't mean it has to be complicated and overly complicated. Uh, and you also mentioned AWS. So we are talking about some really large scale enterprise uh, deployments here. Talk a bit about, you know, team based, uh, you know, kind of tenancy, automatic clustering and what role is clutch playing in once again, simplifying things for developers without overrolling them. Authorization and multi-tenancy is a set of features that will be introduced in clutch soon. So we are currently working on this because it's, um, you know, reality that you have application clusters that might have been, that might be shared on a namespace level. And therefore we create awareness within clutch so that the ownership and the relationship of namespaces to service instances maintain introducing an authorization framework that will allow you to, you know, for example, have developers being able to upgrade a database, but not being able to delete the instance, right? So you can have the least privileged approach in your development team to ensure everything works out. And, you know, those are the enterprise readiness check marks that we go through. So some of that will be an open source clutch, but we might also have some add-ons for clutch where we own the implementation and, and give it for, to, to customers who will use our, our extended stack. Now, and as an example for this right now is something what we call the network connector. So if you think about the problem when your data service automation is outside of your application cluster, if an application declares a service instance and now wants to use it, it's not enough to get a database user. You also have a network path. You also have to have a network path to the service instance. And when do you need to establish that? is when you bind an application to the service instance. So let's say you have an app and it wants to access its Postgres database. You create a service binding by declaring it. So within the clutch client and the clutch control plane, you have two events that this intent is recognized. This is when you can trigger secondary tools, for example, to, and to switch on this network path. So we have a component that is based on an interface that comes with open source clutch. It's called the network connector interface. And what we have that is not open source, for example, is a network connector that will establish an envoy based proxy from one, you know, from the application cluster to the automation backend so that the ap application can actually connect to the service instance. So you could, for example, take that interface do an AWS-based implementation if you're an AWS all-in scenario and, I don't know, use a transient gateway or other means of Amazon to get to the same result. So we'll see that over time in the community, more of these components will be there and will be contributed you know, by our open source partners.